Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Prussia and Beyond. In this episode, we are going to continue the war against Muscovy, and we are going to try to finish it, of course, and we're going to see what's going to be managed. Uh, this episode is going to be a voiceover, as said from last time, and... Let's hope this will not happen ever again. Okay, so the view, Teutonic Order, a nice long country in Central Europe. And uh, I'm going about frenetically with a mouse and so on, probably explaining that like our plans so are basically conquer Muscovy, like try to make peace with Muscovy. And and then going against the Empire, against the Holy Roman Empire. So yeah, we are going to focus on uh, Moskva, so Moscow, its capital, because it's very rich, and we need the money because of the Mercs. Uh, because of the Mercs. So the Mercs are currently on their merry way to Russia. We're going to help out the Estonians in their siege. And yeah, we're verifying our war score. War score is uh, taking up, and we have zero war score. Incredibly, because as you remember last episode, we actually battled. Okay, Sweden might have helped us quite a bit, but yeah. So we are looking now how much Russia has lost its manpower, how they become affected, and apparently, it's not there on the ledger. So probably we harmed them quite a bit so I'm still looking for Muscovy and as you see uh, Muscovy has only like less than 10,000 men so we are approaching us uh, the, near the end of the war so as you can see Sweden is doing a very good job of, of basically sieging the lands of, uh, of uh, Russia and yes, we do not have an advisor. We have we have uh, only one advisor, and of course, too many diplomatic relations and so on. Yeah, it's very now difficult to make friends in the empire since we change religion. So we are trying to work with friends because Moscow is pissed off at us because we went to war against them. The advisors are still very expensive. So I cannot believe how expensive they have gotten. Like for us, like even though that we you know make okay money, like a bit less than before. It's a uh, it's quite a bit of money. So we are trying to control the troops that have really going a long way. So you can see how much troops are affected by forts if you put one they really have to go around and the fort three really prevents them to chase other troops so we you get lot lots and lots more of attrition uh, Russia is trying to uh, Muscovy is trying to siege back its lands we have protestant zealots Good prostit uh, protest uh, yeah, protestant zealots in uh, at the Livonian order, and yeah, we're still trying to vassalize Galicia, and I still am baffled how difficult it became to vassalize other countries. So uh, Bohemia loves us. We are allies. We're nice allies. Uh, we can focus on the military, and I will probably be coming back and then focus a bit more right. complete our offensive idea so nice got an idea plus we managed to get our core ideas so we're looking at the next idea that we, uh, that we could get and yeah we're an army discipline so and all very nice things if you want to battle and achieve great military victories. 
finally we got at least a region that uh, we managed to siege and uh, and hold from um, from Sweden. So yeah, we are trying to yeah liberate Peskov so that we have will have a buffer between the Russians and ourselves. As you see, Moscow really can't do anything against us. I should have actually uh, maybe supported those uh, Protestant zealots because we are from the same religion and the Libyan order is not it's not, it's not our religion and it's, we, it's our enemy basically we want them gone and that will be probably gone in uh, in next episodes we need them gone basically but it's going to be quite difficult to make them gone because alliances are getting much trickier Yeah. So we're doing good, we're sieging, we're sieging in Moscow. So we basically are reversing history at the moment. Because uh, I think it's very unlikely that uh, in history the Holy Roman Empire or the Prussians or Germany itself had territory so far east. Of course, post-war of uh, the First World War. So we're pausing the game. We are hoping that our war score is going up. Like we got, we had 55%. We are winning the war at 55%. But for now, it's only the Swedish war score. So, yeah, on this one, it shows a stability over inflation. But as you can see, we are rolling in admin tech, so you know what else? You know, we can we can spend these points on. We could actually uh, spend these points on the development of our regions, but for now, we try to uh, keep the stability ongoing. So you can see, really, just just a massive circle that uh, that we did. For, uh, to, to try to ch uh, to chase the uh, the Moscovian troops, but we didn't because it's really we, we really do a we really we really do get to go a long way if we want to chase. So yeah, post war taxes and so on to try like we need to try to manage it, and I'm always like nearly always choosing uh, like deficit of manpower over over economy. So, it may be not very good if you are a state that really wages ongoing wars. Oh yeah, that shows that. Now we can at least get another advisor. They're, they're much more cheaper. Uh, and we really need to get, uh, to get these points because we, we are... We're eating our Diplo points and Meruji points. Yeah, so... Did I actually decide to go all the way? No. I didn't. But yeah, because there's a fort there, it's, uh, it's very difficult. So, 71%. This war score is uh, taking our war score was at 11%. Not very big, considering what we are sieging, what we sieged. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I thought to myself, you know, it's not really worth it to go all, up, all over there. Just, you know, we don't need to. And Sweden just make peace. So now it actually becomes very interesting. Because with, uh, Sweden, as you can see, released a bunch of the vassals, of the former vassals, and a bunch of the former charities from Muscovy. And Sweden suddenly grew massive. They got the trading port as well that I was trying to aiming to get. So suddenly Sweden 
really became a big player in the north. We could, we can offer them to be vassalized, uh, Peskov, but they are currently trying to. Uh, like the Swedes want them probably as a vassal because, as you can see, they are trying to get in good relations with them. So they're lovers as well, so we can offer them, we can offer them vassalization. But we already have a vassal in this air, uh, area, so it's preferably, it's preferably to incorporate Peskov in uh, within Estonia than get another vassal over there. Better to have one huge vassal in one region instead of to have two vassals in one region. Oh yeah. Uh, so I was a bit disappointed that I didn't get anything out of the war, but at least Muscovy got blown down, but Sweden got so big. So, and then directly in Lithuania, so it, it's opportunity and declared war on Muscovy. So yeah, um, like yeah, you can you can watch the uh, Catholic uh, Protestant Salishers over there trying to have their demands, but in vain. As you see, Protestant Protestantism has spread. I'm, quite, I'm actually quite surprised that in England and the UK, well, in the United Kingdom and Ireland, they haven't yet uh, reformed, because, as you may know. Uh, England is Aglic uh, Anglican at the moment, like the official religion. For now. Oh yeah. So we want to see Brandenburg, and so if the emperor has recently gone to war and so on, we cannot do it. And as you can see, Austria and so on will join them. So, because we also have no causes barely. And, but, however, as you can see, they're allied with Bohemia, but Bohemia will actually go to war with us against Brandenburg, which is really fine. It's okay. It would be nice to have Brandenburg as a vassal, because at least we have a voter. We have somebody that votes with within the Holy Empire that could vote with us if we get them to like us. So if you declare on uh, Lithuania, nobody apart from Galicia, this tiny thing, will help us and Bohemia will join them. So we need to try to get Bohemia to join us with us basically. So either we should either declare war on uh, Poland or on um, Brandenburg and we need to protect the uh, uh, like uh, Bohemia from Austria that is going to be our next gameplay we are going to need to protect them of course you can see Lith Lithuania just gaining vast amounts of territory and Muscovy just getting cut down to pieces so Muscovy is, uh, is uh, having a very difficult time ahead yeah that was a very difficult event like we lose church power but we can get something for it and church power in the protestant faith if you choose protestant faith church power is basically the thing that you need to basically focus on an area so probably I'm going to pop up the window next because I was wondering at this time what the hell church power was actually necessary for. No, so I'm still I'm still trying trying to figure it out. We have three diplomats, so yeah, always keep diplomats occupied, always keep keep them busy. So yeah, Austria is at war with the Ottomans. We want them to win. But we don't want them to gain too much. So yeah, we are because we lost uh, many of the claims that we had on the previous countries, uh, on, on the countries previous uh, in the previous video. We need to get these claims back. So a reason basically to go to war. 
Probably on this video, we also lose the claim in Gotland. So yeah, we can actually get dropped for our uh, for our vassal and Austria and Mecklenburg will actually join us. And Poland and Denmark would only go against us. So basically, this is actually very interesting because we could do it. The only problem is that was actually the next plan that um, that I had in mind, and that we could do it. That while we wait for our manpower to recover, we could go to war against the Livian Order, against the remains of the Livian Order. And uh, amazingly, Austria would actually join us. The only problem, tiny bitty problem, is that Austria currently is at war, and it's probably probably I'm going to go back on it. And uh, Austria will be involved into two different wars, which really is going to eat away its manpower. And uh, Poland is actually quite well manned. It has really all its manpower. Yeah, we're making good money again, that's good. We're going to build some stuff as well. And I really need to develop the land to get more buildings sorted out. So now, basically, I'm trying something out. Let's try army, like these, uh, these barracks. I never actually uh, did these barracks before, so let's hope that uh, it's worth it. I'm trying to choose where, where can we go. I probably will focus again on trade and I probably will see... Oh, look at that. The build technology. I probably will see that, uh, I think in Memo, there is a nice trade zone, or maybe Riga, but uh, Riga didn't do it. Didn't put a uh, trade, didn't focus on trade, and we need to basically spend points on them. So yeah, money factory, so factories and so on will be as well nice to have. They also, it's, it seems that they also decreased lots of things that were that used to be available, but now there's uh, there are less of them. So it's quite interesting how they sorted uh, sorted them out. So yeah, we are looking on that, on the development, and development really needs lots of different points. So, different points for development, so basically, advanced the land, like the building, uh, buildings, like how many buildings you can get. So, for example, here, you need 20 points spent from you, diplomacy points. Like 20 points that you spent from the diplomacy points in the uh, <laughs> previous window, we can build and uh, like not build, but the management of development. You can spend the points there, and it gets you another um, another plot. So we need lots of diplotech. So probably we're going to focus on diplotech afterwards. Just checking the ledgers and so on. We want to see who Poland is, and I can. And as you can see, thirty-one thousand men. Thirty-one thousand men. Like, with seven thousand men, I, there's nothing to do. Plus, we don't have Sweden to bail us out. They don't want to come. Austria is in a, is in a bad position because it has now limited men. Like, as you can see, you can have 15,000 soldiers um, of the Ottomans, and then you have only quite a few Austrian um, soldiers just spread, uh, just spread around. We upgrade our some of our military units. Oh, yeah. I was uh, I was very worried like uh, how this going this is going to be like Austria and so on like fifteen thousand eleven thousand Ottomans 
And I was wondering, uh, are it's actually Bohemia in war against the Ottomans? But Bohemia seems to be involved in another war and wants to actually march its men just down in the Mediterranean. Like, really, they're going on a tour, in the tour of Eastern Europe. They're going to visit some strange lands. Like, yeah, I was going to guess, like, Bohemia, why are at war? And they're at war against these guys. <laughs> Where it's just like, do, does Bohemia, tr like, what are they doing there? It's like, it's ridiculous. Why are they marching their men? So, it's just ridiculous. So, yeah, that's still marching them down to the night. It's... I was questioning myself. I was questioning my sanity on this one. Naples amazingly got... Uh, oh, is it independent from arrogance? Probably Castille released them. But yeah, Naples is uh, seems to want to form Italy. And Milan seems to be doing quite well as well. And... Yeah, probably the uh, Milan and the papacy will be probably going at at war against each other, as well as Naples. So, yeah, lots of undecisiveness at the moment. To whom shall we go to war with? Shall we go to war with Brandenburg? Shall we go to war against the Livian Order? And the empire is actually reforming quite quickly as well. The Emperor is enacting lots and lots of reforms very quick. And it's tough. And yeah, England rivals us. England. We are so far away and England rivaled us. It's like, why? We're so far away. So, I was reading this. I was reading this event. So, yeah, read this uh, along. I'm not going to read it again. It's probably going to stay there for quite a bit. And I think I chose act forcefully. Uh, sorry, my reading takes quite a while. Um, I am in law, but like sometimes I like to skim books and how to skim books and how to skim text. That's what you basically do when you're a law student, but uh, on this one, uh, I like to take my time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I basically sacrificed church power, I think. Yes. And then I discovered what the hell is church power, and ta da! And I say, ah, we can click on this. And then, ah, you got things. And then I think I chose the development cost and discipline. But I should have, I should have uh, chosen uh, more military things. So production efficiency and so on. It's very difficult, but that's very nice choices. It's probably an updated. Uh, it was probably updated in, uh, in one of the DLCs that I bought in the summer sale. So, um, so yeah, so we choose that. Development cost, so less money to be distributed. But then I saw, oh, look at that. Uh, we, like, m missionary strength, we're not going to focus that because our missionaries are very strong. So, I was going to go discipline and maybe another tech. There you go. Devotion is very important. So probably we got devotion. It's basically included. It's not something. It, it it's uh, not because your religious state and so on. It's probably in every single state. So we're trying to find out, find out another rival. And then I said myself, you know what? We want to keep Sweden satisfied with us. We want to keep Sweden as an ally and because Sweden rivaled Muscovy, I said, you know what? Let's rival Muscovy. Yay! Click. Come on. Click on it. Click. Yay. Okay. So now our rival is Muscovy. So unfortunately, it seems that 
something is like a situation from now on is going to plummet. So Sweden, as you can see now, does like us, you no. Know. And uh, yeah, Poland and Lithuania went at war, which is very nice to see. So apparently Lithuania thinks that it's a new powerhouse at the moment. It's like they became free from Poland, said Poland, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> and as you can see, suddenly you have Bohemia just helping out Poland with 50,000 troops. And Lithuania is, it seems to be trying to scramble the people together. Uh, and Lithuania is asking us for military assets. I said, nope, because, you know, screw them. I'm sorry if there are any Lithuanians, but anyways. Lithuania won't go across our lands because it's our rival and they hate us anyways. So why make them hate us less? It is anyway still going to hate us. So we're probably getting claims on Duopt because our rival don't don't have any claims there, and we want to give these claims to our um, rival. Did I say rival? We want to give these claims to our not my word, vassal. Sorry, that's right, vassal. Oh. Yeah. Now we're still deciding, shall we go to Brandenburg, shall we go to, against the Libyan order? Ah, uh, it's... Ah, uh, it's very tricky. So, you got the convergence going, which is very nice. Holland is converting at the moment. And, yeah, we, are, we saw the imperial reforms and it's getting very dangerous, it's a danger, yeah, dangerously close where we can, where we become vassals. We don't want Austria anymore as an overlord. We need the lead to appear and I need to look where, when the league, when the league forms and we want to create the league if it can be created. I need to check it out again. But yeah, the league should be forming. Truce expired with with Austria for the wars that uh, that Austria did, where we didn't participate, but we had our own little war. Instead, and as you can see, Lithuania is getting mugged by Poland. Oh, oh. Maybe the Poles are getting mugged by the Lithuanians. Poles were in retreat, the Lithuanians were in retreat. Bohemians are sieging. And Lithuania is just observing. Oh, wait a minute. Is Poland actually. No, Poland is. Okay, so it seems that. Okay, the. Uh, Bohemia is not helping Poland. Or is. Poland? I don't know what's going on. But apparently. Yeah, it seems that uh, Bohemia is sieging Poland. That's strange. Bohemia. Yeah, yeah, Bohemia. Okay, so Poland is basically being torn apart. That is going to be quite interesting. And suddenly, Sweden broke the alliance with us. Suddenly. Like, really unexpected, and they are fucking furious against us. We don't know why, and then it's grabbing my shit together, and, and um, I'm just saying, you know what, friends, come on, come on, come on. Be friends with us. Jonan from Helen. <laughs> but yeah, friends, we need them as an ally now. Because, friends will help us over for Austria. Friends will be as well helpful uh, against Sweden because the French military like the French French are a military power they are powers they numbed down France because before before common sense France you couldn't fail when you were playing France uh, David the Goon tried France I think uh, you, can, you can go on his webpage uh, um, YouTube channel it's just uh, one of the, uh, the recommended YouTube channel next, uh, next to me and he's basically he has a uh, 
he has a series with friends going out on at the moment, and I think it's at his at his third try with friends, because like before you couldn't you couldn't fail as friends. Now it seems that you can, and it's very interesting how the dif the different the different ways that you can fail with friends, and we lose another ally with uh, Mecklenburg. Mecklenburg wants to go against Holland, Saxon Lauenberg and that and our manpower just didn't recover enough. We need men, we cannot allow ourselves to waste men on this war where we probably won't get anything from it and moreover we can conquer Mecklenburg afterwards. So I declined. Yeah, I declined. Yeah. So and we, uh, we already saw that Mecklenburg was already, like, it, uh, they were already in two wars, they're getting siege at home, it's like, no, it's a lost cause. So, 116 points. So, discipline is very good. Discipline is, if you have a, a very disciplined army and morale, you are, you, you'll be doing awesome in the battlefield. I think probably the next thing I will be choosing morale. So, whoosh, for the whip. So yeah, we need new allies. We are scrambling for allies. Estonia, Galicia, they are not going to do much. Austria, yay, but soon going to go away. Bohemia, yes, for sure. We need them as very nice uh, as as allies. So, so um. So that we can topple Austria, France it is very much needed because if there's a coalition going to be forming between if uh, Lithuania, Muscovy, and Sweden are forming a coalition and decide to take us, we will be doomed because it will be too much men. Too much men will be will be upon us. So maybe I could start a coalition against Lithuania because Lithuania is at war, uh, like uh, allied with uh, Sweden until, uh, apart if I'm wrong, the Livian Order is now actually attacking the Skov. But <laughs> yeah, now the situation reversed itself because Lithuania is allied with Lithuania. Uh, uh, like, sorry, Liv the Livian order is allied with Lithuania. So now Piskov is like uh, having more land. So now I'm saying, uh, shall we go at war now or shall we wait for later? And I think it will be better to have uh, to go to war next time uh, against them because Poland is totally annihilated and wouldn't be able to stand another war so pr probably this will be uh, this will be a good decision so yeah so we are observing like we got several territories like Russia Sweden and us oh these borders are intense it probably is going to be a very, like, there's, there are love triangles, but I think this one is a hate triangle. Um, and uh, the good thing about it is that France rivaled Sweden. So, yeah. Yeah, we need this. We need this uh, just before the win. Because if uh, if Piskov gets it, I would need to befriend them and vassalize them, and all going to, all go to war against them, which is is going to be very tricky. So yeah, I guess that uh, this like uh, this will be it, or maybe the video is going to be a bit longer, or did I just pause it? No, the, maybe the video maybe I just pause there. And yeah, I was I was still very worry, worried about the Holy Roman Empire getting very much powerful, and we yeah, I'm I'm looking 
is that um, yeah, disallowing eternal wars. Yeah, the second one. This is going to be tricky. So we probably are going to leave the empire if this it, it gets enabled. That yeah. So basically, the empire, the emp emperor will be only like there won't be any more elective monarchy. And then we are being vassalized, and then Rivanovatio Imperi, so new emperor. And now we want to start the league because you, like for now, you can only be a Catholic to become the emperor. And the league basically was there to, to say no. Also, Protestants can become emperor. So, yeah. So we hope that uh, the uh, Austrians are not going to reform everything too quickly. Because it's only fifteen hundred, uh, like it's only fifteen twelve. So, and the game goes until eighteen twenty. So we, sh the empire shouldn't form as quick. Let's hope, because otherwise this will be a very quick game. We probably will succeed in uh, forming Prussia, but we probably will fail in becoming the emperor or even forming Germany if if this continues like this. Like, as I said, I'm not a professional uh, EU4 player, so, you know, like, I will do my best, but we want to survive. We want to be in independent, we want to survive. As you can see, Protestant uh, Protestantism is, uh, is spreading. We have as well some other reform centers. There's also a reform, uh, reform center probably active within Lithuania. So, and as you can see, England is, is reforming itself. So, yeah, it's uh, quite interesting to, uh, to note. So, anyways, I think uh, we can stop here, and I see you next time.